Alright, alright. Is Alright, good. Hi, this is Marcus Rocky here at Quarty from Ed's Temple, and I am joined today by Mr. John Karabi of the Dead Daisy. So thanks for talking to us, mate. How are you? Yeah, thanks. Uh, first things first, let's start off by asking how you became, how you became involved as you only joined this year. Yes. Um, apparently they started the band with a gentleman named John Stevens and uh, David Lowy, our guitar player. Um, I think they did a couple records with John. Um, I don't know what happened, to be honest with you. Um, I just got a call in February, or end of January, from Marco Mendoza, um, telling me that John wasn't able to go to Cuba with them, uh, wasn't able to leave Australia. So they asked me to do the Cuban thing with them, which they had been working on for the better part of a year uh, to do shows. And so I, I went out to LA, I met everybody, um, I checked out their music on uh, YouTube because I had never really heard of them before. <laughs> so uh, I went out to LA, I met everybody, and uh, about two weeks later I was on my way to Cuba. So, and then it's been non-stop ever since. We, we did Cuba in February. March we were in Sydney doing a record. Um, we finished in April and May we were on tour with Kiss here in Europe and we've done America with White Snake, uh, Australia with Kiss, the Kiss Cruise, and we just got done doing Europe again with White Snake. Now we're on our own here in the UK. Well, so it's it been defi awesome. Definitely sounds like it's been a hectic, crazy year. Yeah, and, and then in between, I also have my own solo band in America. I've been doing that. I just recorded a live album doing the Motley 94 material. Nice. <coughs> and I'm putting out a DVD and a live album of that as well. So I've been very busy. Yeah. 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 Although one thing that makes the Dead Daisy so unique is that the collective number of musicians who are in the band have all worked with legends like White Snake, Lizzie, Stones, and Guns N' Roses. So how does it feel working with them? Uh, to be honest with you, it's very easy. Uh, there's really, really no crazy egos or, um, you know, and, the, and the, the, the talent pool was just ridiculous. So, uh, honestly, when we did the record, uh, we were in Sydney, Australia, and we wrote, recorded, mixed, mastered, and ended the artwork for the album in 30 days. So, yeah, it was uh, crazy. So, working with these guys has been it's been awesome. It's been incredible. So, I'm very pleased. Uh, so, uh, and of course, the new album is called, uh, do you it's my pronunciation, Revolution? Revolution, yes. I guess that. Would you like to tell us a little bit about it, such as, well, that's such as, well, and like in concepts or themes behind the songs? Yeah, it's just, you know, the, the, the name actually came, it was kind of inspired, the name. I can't see the music, but the, the name was inspired just from the trip that we had to Cuba. Because everywhere you go in Cuba, it's like painted on the walls and there's signs that says Viva la Revolucion. Uh, you know, so we were going through, when we did the album, we actually did a documentary. Uh, it's about a 20 or 25 minute documentary on our trip to Cuba. And then we also did a coffee table book and we were sitting there going, you know, what do we call the album? And we saw that, hello, we saw that, uh, we saw that word everywhere. So we were like, why don't we just call it Revolution? You know what I mean? Um, so it wound up being across the board, the, the documentary, the book, like everything is called Revolution. As far as the music goes, uh, there was really no course for anything. We just kind of sat in a room with acoustic guitars and um, just kind of put a bunch of ideas together. Thank you. Um, we just got a bunch of ideas together and whatever kind of goes to the top, that's what we put on the record, you know what I mean? So there wasn't really a lot of thought or planning on what we wanted the record to sound like. We just kind of let it go where it wanted to go, you know what I mean? But the name definitely came from Cuba, you know what I mean? Uh, let's see, when it comes to the live shows, how does it feel standing on the same stage with the musicians from the, um, the band I mentioned earlier? You know, it's it, it's it's awesome because, I, I mean, not to sound cocky, but I just truly believe that with, again, the, 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 the talent and depth that we have, um, whether it's a small stage... Can you get something for your... Uh, uh, no, thanks, I'm good. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the de depth of talent is so incredible that when I stand on stage, there's a kind of a bravado. You know what I mean? Like we we, we just we just it, it, it clicks. It works. The chemistry is great. It's very powerful, but it's it's fun. Like we all have a great time with each other. So it's kind of one of those things where. Um, you know, we've had the opportunity to go out and play with a lot of great bands this year, but at the same time, like, I feel like when this band's, like, really clicking on all cylinders, like, it's a hard act to follow. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, so, you know, I don't want to say you get cocky about it, but there is definitely a little bit of a bravado there, you know, when we walk on stage, and it's, it's a lot of fun. It definitely is. Uh, all right, this year you've toured with, all, although with bands like you know, Kiss and White Snake. So, do you have like any particular memories or favorite shows that you can more recall? Uh, for, for me, to, for me to be honest with you, this year my favorite show I, I would have to say was the Downhill Festival. Um, you know, just as a music fan growing up in America, you know, years ago. Uh, I mean, I know that the Downhill Festival used to be called. Castle Donington Festival years ago, and I was supposed to play it when I was in Motley with Aerosmith, and for some reason we canceled. But um, it, like, I've always read about that festival in like magazines like Kerrang and all these different things growing up. So in '93, when we were supposed to do it, I was stoked. I was like, oh, yes, I'm finally gonna, you know, I, I'll have arrived. Like, when I can say I've gone to England and played the Donington Festival, that'll be the thing. And then it fell through. So when I saw our tour schedule this year, and I saw that we were playing the Donington Festival, I was stoked. I do have to admit, I was a little nervous um, because we played on the last day of the festival, uh, which was Sunday, and we played it I think 11 in the morning. Yeah, and it had rained all weekend. And, you, and you're sitting there going, okay, it's raining, it's muddy, everybody's been drinking all weekend. You know, are they festivals? Yeah, are they really going to get up and come and see us at 11 in the morning? So we went and we sound checked. Um, we probably sound checked around 9.30 or 10 o'clock and there was literally just a huge open field. There was nobody there. So we're all sitting there like like Marco always says, there's a little bead of sweat, you know, going, oh man, this is going to be a bloodbath, you know. But we walked off stage, we changed into our stage clothes and we came back and there was just a sea of people. Like, I don't know where they came from or how they got there, but there was just, it was hot when we played, and it was, it was cold. The only, the, the, the only bad thing is we didn't get to play as long as I would have liked, but, you know, maybe next year uh, yeah. we'll have a little bit longer of a yeah. set, but I, it was, it was awesome. Yeah. I think you had to sit down the set because of all like, the dangers of the weather conditions. Well, no, 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 it was it, because we were... You know, look, we're a relatively unknown band still. I think we're, I think we're gaining a lot of steam here in England or the UK. Um, but at the end of the day, at that point, we were kind of still. People were like, we were the dead daisies. But uh, it just worked, man. It was awesome. You know, so we only had about a 25-minute set. You know, so we did about maybe five songs, six songs. And then we had to knock it on the head, and then, you know, you have to the schedule, you have to get off, get your gear off, so the next band can set up. But, uh, it was, uh, it was definitely, it was definitely one of the highlights of this tour for me. Yeah. All right, now, now the next few questions I'm going to answer are actually, are actually, you know, questions that have been submitted by, you know, some, you know, fans on social media. Okay. And these next three is from, and I do apologize if I pronounce her name wrong, Lou Chamberlain, or I think, or I think that's her name. And the first question she asks, is there anything in the pipelines of working with Mick Mars? Mm -hmm. Mick and I have been talking. Um, the, you know, the thing of it is right now, like I've been doing the Daisy's thing, and I have my own solo thing too. Um, 
I told Mick that if he did a solo record, I would love to help him out with it. Uh, to what extent, we haven't really sat and discussed it. We, we have been communicating via text on this tour. And he'll be done, uh, I believe, January 31st with Motley. I'll be home the 21st. So when it's all done, um, we're, I have plans on getting home and just kind of chatting with Mick and trying to figure out how we can do this with my schedule being as crazy as it is. But I would love to be involved with it, yes. So um, hopefully we'll sort it out and I'll be able to do it with him. All right. Were you ever, were you ever considered as an opening act for the Crew Farewell Tour? No. And that's pretty quick. No. <laughs> All right. Okay. So let's move on. And and the last one from the route is is are there any plans to bring the Crew ninety four album tour here to Britain? I'd like to. The the only problem with that is, and I'm, I'm going to explain. Uh, a lot of people have asked why I did a DVD and a live album. And that's part of the reason why uh, when I've been on tour with the Daisies and I've been asked to bring it to Australia, I've been asked to bring it to certain parts of Europe uh, all, all this week, uh, playing all through the UK, everybody's like, dude, you got to bring the 94 thing over here. The problem with that is that um, it's, it, you know, I, I hate to even say it, but it's kind of a money thing. Like, I have five guys in my band, um, so it requires five air flights, five hotels, feeding five people every day. Now, but the, the, one of the main things is the last time I was here, uh, I was here a couple, a couple years ago, I did an acoustic set here in London, and uh, I guess apparently the working visas to come over here all uh, used to be, well, they, it used to be, you could pay like four or five hundred dollars, and it would cover, or I, I guess it might be pounds, but you could pay this fee, and it would cover the whole group as a group but now I think they changed it where it's like that amount per person in the group so you know right out of the gate if you, if you think about airfare and the visas and you know just hotels you're talking about you know probably in, in close to or in excess of fifteen or twenty thousand dollars. So for me to bring it over, I have to find promoters that are willing to take the chance and spend that kind of money to bring my whole band and my production and everything over here. You know, and then and then and then there's renting gear. You know, because I wouldn't bring my gear over. I'd rent gear here. But so there's there's a lot of variables in the whole thing. So what I did is I. Uh, I've been doing that show in America and Canada, and a, a, pretty much across the board, all of the fans have been saying, oh my god, I've been waiting to hear this for 20 some years, this music live. So I just went and I thought about it, and I said, you know what, um, if I can't bring it, and, and I may still be able to, but if I can't bring it to UK, or Australia, or Japan, or Europe, or any of these places, um, then what I'll do is, I'll do a show, in which I, I went, I just booked a show in Nashville on like Tuesday night, and we just set up our gear, I invited a bunch of friends to come down, and we just played the entire album from top to bottom, I filmed it all for a DVD, and I recorded it for a live album, and I'm going to package the two. So if I can't get to England or wherever you are watching this, um, you know, when I get home from this, I got to mix the record, and hopefully it'll be out in February or March. Yes, fair enough. All right, now the next question is from David Reese, and he asks, are there any chances of the screen playing any shows like Night Fest in the near future? Well, unfortunately, our drummer Walt Woodward. Uh, God, I, I think it's. I think it might even be long. It might be seven or eight years ago. He passed away. Uh, so that's now we did get an offer a few years ago uh, 
to go and do, um, what is it? it's a huge festival in Japan. Um, they offered us quite a bit of money to come over and do one show, just reunite, rehearse, and do one show in Japan with our original drummer, who was Scott Travis from Judas Priest. Um, so we talked about it. The problem of it is there's a couple members in the screen that just don't see eye to eye about a few things. And so I, I just, yeah, I just don't see it happening anytime in the near future. Unless somebody changes their opinions of each other or whatever, it's probably never going to happen. But if you want to hear some of it, come and see my band. <laughs> yeah. All right, and the last one question I'm going to ask is from, and I apologize if I pronounced his name wrong, Luda Behel, I can't pronounce his name, I'm sorry, and he asks, is, and he asks, and I quote, is it a deliberate choice for the, de the Dead Daisies not to pick songs from the individual band members' back catalogs? Um, you know, to be honest, I never brought it up, um, but, the, you know, the Dead Daisies is its own entity, uh, you know, so... I mean, we have done, uh, you know, at a few solo shows, we've done kind of a, a loose version of Knocking on Heaven's Door, which obviously everybody knows Guns N' Roses covered, but we don't really, you know, I, like I, I kind of, I want to, I personally like the fact that everything's separate. If people want to come and see me do Hooligan's Holiday or any of the screen material, they can come and see me, you know what I mean? Uh, right now, we're focused on the Daisies. We have a new record out, and that's that's it. But, um, you know, maybe later, I don't know, it'll change, maybe not. I just, I just didn't, um, it's just never really been brought up. You know, we've got enough material. Um, you know, there's, there's two full Daisies records and a Daisies EP. Um, I mean, we could probably go out and play for two hours just to learn our own material. So there's really no need for it, you know what I mean? Whatever. That's fair enough. Right now, uh, right now for five years, from 92 to 97, you were, of course, involved with a lot of Cruz vocalists. Do you yes. have any memories? Do you have like any good or bad memories of you know, working with them that you don't like to share? You know, I'm, I'm, I, honestly, it, like the whole thing was an amazing experience. You know, I was just some like unknown kid from the screen. Uh, I didn't have two pennies in America. We say I didn't have a, I, I didn't have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. So, um, you know, they gave me that opportunity to become kind of a, I don't want to say a household name, but I like, look, I'm, it's 20 years later and I'm sitting here doing an interview with you in, in England. So, um, you know, they, they, they gave me that opportunity and I thank them for it, you know, so uh, the entire thing was a great experience. It still is, you know, there's still a ton of Motley fans out there that love the material that I did with the band and, um, you know, so I don't have anything, I, you know, I try not to retain negative any negative things. I mean, yeah, there was some, there was some, you know, towards the end, there was some bullshit between all of us, but I, you know, I don't dwell on it. It's, it's like, that's, to me, that, that all, like, any negativity is looking backwards. I'm always, I always try to look forward, so. I guess that's what you can do, really. Yeah, they, I mean, you know, you can see, it, it takes as much effort and energy to be negative or to hate something as it does to be positive and to let it go. You know, so I'm just, uh, you know, I choose to let things go. And, and in all honesty, I do thank Motley. I, again, it's 20 years later. And I'm still able to travel the world and play music. And, you know, whether they, whether anybody wants to admit it or not, for the rest of my life, I will always be one of the singers of Motley Crue. And I'm cool with that. I'm fine with it. So it's all good. Yeah. Alright then, now is there anything else you're currently working on outside of the stuff you do with the Daisy that you'd like to talk about? Other than the, my solo band, I'm, I am going to be doing, at some point, I've got a lot of writing to do. Unless my pen runs out of ink. Um, you know, I've got the, uh, the live record to mix. Uh, the Daisies are getting ready to go in and do a new record in February. Um, my my record label in America is asking for a new solo electric record, and then 
whatever happens with Mick when I get home, we'll sort that out too. So I'm going to be the next year pretty creative. And next time you guys see me, I may have half of this hair. <laughs> Even this. All right then. Now one of the support bands for this tour is a new is a new British country rock group called Color of Noise, who I've been following for some time. And earlier the year, I made a pledge for the album when they had their pledge music campaign. So my question to you is, what's your opinion on crowdfunding? You know what? It's it's. Uh, it, I think it's a great thing. You know, if if, if fans want to, you know, if they want to continue to hear music and. Uh, you know, for every band like us, Wood Collar of Noise, you know, there's there's a million other bands out there that are pulling their hair out trying to figure out how to how to get a record deal or how to you know, so the whole pledge thing I think is actually quite genius. If 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 a band's out there and they're playing and they've got fans and they wanna help them out and it's just another way to get new music out there. Um, uh, Personally, I haven't I haven't had to do that yet, um, you know. But I think it's a great thing, man. And and in all honesty, there's a, I'm sorry, I'm having a bit of a brain fart right now. The call of noise, and there was another. Um, I'm sorry, guys. There's two bands out with us right now, and they're both amazing. I've I've, I've watched them, you know. Even even when I can't watch, we can hear them from the dressing room and they're both really really good bands and I love the fact that a lot of these newer acts are kind of getting into this 70s retro riff rock thing you know so it's 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 pretty cool I'm excited about I'm, I'm excited to see where music goes in the next year or two so good band though oh yeah definitely I actually got a copy of the record actually in the post the other day. I think I actually have it with me, and it, and it, and 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 it is actually good. So then, if you, although all the if watches, I urge you, if you don't have it, get it. It's good. Yeah, sorry, they're, they're, sorry, they're, shameless plug. <laughs> no, it's okay. They're they're a great great band. So yeah, it's definitely good to see you know classic rock coming back. Yes. Another another topic I'd like your opinion as of all the uh, all the, of course as a singer is auto tuners. What do you think? Do you think it's a way? Do you do you sort of are you sort of in the camp that it's all well agree it's a way of cheating? Well, to a degree, yeah, but you know it's you know it, 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 the, the funny thing of it is there's so many variables about being a singer. A lot of times you can't hear yourself. Uh, monitors, even with the in ears. I use in ears a lot of times, and um, it's weird. Like some nights, you just don't hear yourself. And I was really surprised because we were just talking about this in the dressing room last night. I, I personally don't use one, um, but I was surprised at how many bands that do. Uh, but it's weird. Like you know, Marco was saying like. You know, sometimes you can't hear yourself very well, and you're just kind of like maybe a little sharp or a little flat, and it just kind of it just tweaks you and puts you right on the money, you know, which is fine. But personally, I I, I don't really know. Like I haven't I haven't used it. Um, I'm I'm not a you know like even in the studio like you know. Everybody will go and do ten or twelve takes or something of something, and then they'll piece together a vocal. You know what I mean? But you know, as far as live goes, I, I've never used one before, so I don't, I really can't one way or another comment on it. I guess it's a good thing for some people, um, and then others may say, "Well, you're cheating." You know, whatever. Who cares? As long as you know, as long at the end of the day, as long as the people that paid money for the ticket are happy with the show, who cares? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. All right, now the uh, well, last question is that, of course, as you sort of talked about earlier, this year has been quite busy for you both, for both yourself and you know, as well as you know, the dead, dead. Oh, so sorry, again, the dead daisies and anything else you've been doing. So, what are the outcomes you can see for next year in terms of projects and gigs? I see myself being stupidly busy next year, in a, but that's a good thing because there was a lot of times I remember calling my agent going, you know, 
I, I'm just one of these people that can't sit for too long. Like when I go home, I become I become one with my couch at home and my remote, and I'll just sit and I'll watch TV for a while, and then I just I'm, I'm like, all right, I I need to get back to work because I'm just I'm being lazy. But so I like working a lot, but. Um, I just recently got married, and my wife. I think my wife is sure if she if she signed up for the right, you know, right thing. I have been home that, that you know, whatever. But um, I just think I'm going to be very busy next year. Like I said, if I've got my thing to do, uh, Dead Daisies record, uh, and then hopefully if I can work out some sort of schedule with Mick, I'll be doing that as well. So I I definitely will be busy. So. Yeah. Right. And I think that's all we have. So someone say, you know, thanks for talking, talking about it. And is there anything else you know, you'd like to add, you know, before you know, shut us off? Actually, I do want to say to all the, is this for the UK or is this? Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go on YouTube so anyone can see it. Okay. Well, to everybody that came to see us this year, um, it was amazing. All the shows with Kiss, all the shows with Whitesnake. And especially here in the UK, every it, the attendance has been amazing. The response has been amazing, and uh, we appreciate your continued support. Thank you. All right, well, I think, well, thank you so much. Good day. All right, I look buddy. forward to the show. All right. Yeah.